everyone. Here is my tutorial for the Creations by Mache pattern number 107 done a little differently than the pattern. Now this video is not trying to put the original construction down by any means. As I say, it is sewing, you do you. I just wanted to do things a little differently. So here I'm doing view A this time. There's also another collar option that's pointed and another option that is collarless. Regardless of the view that you choose, you should be able to follow this tutorial to put the bubble together. So if you decide to do the square collar like I did, you'll have two of these to cut out. If you did the pointed collar, you'll have four. And if you didn't do a collar, well, you can just skip those pieces. <laughs> if you want to embellish the collar, I'd recommend doing that before you cut out your pieces. Now I'm doing this little hand embroidered duck motif and I do have a video tutorial on how to do these shadow work ducks that way I will link below. And the motif is available for instant download from my website for two dollars so if you're doing suspenders you'll cut out two of those pieces and then you'll have one back bubble bottom cut on the fold as well as one front bubble bottom cut on the fold and next you will have two sleeves and finally and this is where I'm differing from the pattern you'll have two fronts cut on the fold, two shirt fronts cut on the fold, as well as two shirt backs cut on the fold. And for those shirt backs, I lined up the fold along the center back mark. So far, our babies are kind of long and thin, but if yours is chunkier, you may want to go half inch or so away from that center back mark. Oh, and on that shirt front, I cut little notches to mark where the fabric tucks are gonna go later on. And last but not least, I am using this whip stitch piping to embellish the garment. I am loving this stuff. I also use it for their 4th of July outfits in blue and red. And I just I think it's darling. It kind of just twinkles at you. <laughs> so to get started, I first made the tucks down the front of those shirt pieces. And to make each tuck, I matched up where those notches were on top of the bottom of the tuck. Wrong sides together because you want the tuck on the right side of the garment. And then I ironed everything into place and sew straight down from one pair of those notches to the next pair of notches. And I repeated this for all of the tucks, including those on the second shirt front, which will be the lining. So yes, the lining will have tucks in it, and if you rather not have that look, then what you can do is do the tucks on your front skirt as do your tucks on the shirt front and use that shirt front with all the text in it as a pattern piece for the front shirt lining. Oh my goodness, my words are just twisted today. But yeah, I hope you hope you get my drift. So once I was done with those texts, then I put together the suspenders. Now these are optional, but if you want to do them, you can fold the fabric in half lengthwise and sew it together with the, that 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, just a friendly reminder. And then you can trim up that seam and turn the suspenders right sides out using a safety pin. Then you'll base the suspenders in place where you like them before joining the shoulders of the shirt together. And I am 0 for 2 when it comes to forgetting these suspenders, so once again I am ripping open the shoulder seams so I can slide these suckers in after the fact. Oh, anywho, I, then I basted the tucks at the bottom of the shirt along with the suspenders. Okay, so here is one of the major differences from the original pattern that I decided to do. I'm doing one of those circles of bodice pieces. So you'll have a front piece, then a back piece, then a front piece, and then finally another back piece. And then you'll sew all of these together at the shoulder seams using that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Then you can iron open those seams and bring the front pieces together. This will leave those back bodice pieces with a nice folded edge. And then I lined up everything and gave it a really good ironing. From there, I moved on to the collar. I put the piping around this collar and I'm sewing at the 5 eighths of an inch mark. And then when I get to a corner, I just put some notches in it as it makes sense. And those notches allow me to turn that corner and then I ironed all of that down before putting the other collar on top of it with right sides together. I sewed the two together with the stitches from the piping facing up so I could go right around the top of them or slightly on the inside and that way I know it's going to be a nice clean transition from that fabric to where the piping is without any of those stitches showing. Yeah, Henry. And then I trimmed up the corners and seam allowance and turned the collar right sides out. And I used this little pointer tool, it is linked below, to push out those corners into a nice neat point. And finally I gave everything a really good ironing again. 
Then I attached the collar to the shirt. I unfolded the shirt lining from the shirt since I'm only sewing the collar to the shirt for right now, not the lining area. I matched up the center of the collar to the center of the front of the shirt, and then I continued to pin around to the back of the shirt. Yeah. For now, I'm just basing the collar to the shirt, and when that's done, I fold the lining of the shirt back onto the collar, kind of making a sandwich collar, if you will. And then I sewed from one center back all the way to the other center back, and this time I'm using that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Now this is optional, but I thought it was a really good idea to understitch this whole ensemble. Now just really quick on how to understitch, you'll bring that entire seam to the lining side, and then stitch right on top, like on the right side of your garment, right next to that seam. And understitching helps prevent your lining from popping back at you. It's also helping just everything lay nicely with this collar. It's gotten slightly bulky and the understitching just really helps things to settle into place. Audrey, what do you have? Oh, thank you. Thank you, pumpkin. That's just for mama. Okay. Then I trimmed up that seam and clipped the notches around the curves of the neckline so everything would lay nice and flat. And then I gave everything a really, really good ironing. <laughs> okay, moving on to those sleeves. If you want to embellish them at all, do that now before attaching them. I'm embellishing with them with that same piping from before. And since this fabric that I'm working with doesn't really have like an actual right or wrong side to it, I'm able to take advantage of that and do this little detail to the sleeve. Basically, I turn up the raw edge under about quarter of an inch, and then I turn it up until that folded edge is collinear to the notch in the sleeve. And then I'm sandwiching this piping into that fold that I've created and top stitching that down. And all right, we are making some progress now onto the bubble bottom. And so I took the bubble back piece and cut down the, the center back so I can make a placket. And I have two methods on making a placket that I will link down below. If you are curious, I went with the continuous placket method for this one. So after the placket was done, I sewed the bubble back to the bubble front at the side seams using French seams. And I have a detailed video on how to do French seams that is linked below. Then I put two rows of gather stitches in the bubble around the waist. One row on either side where those permanent stitches are going to go later on. And the idea of having two rows is that it helps keep your gathers from going, yeah Henry, from going crooked on you when you sew on top of them. Then I took this little strip of fabric that was four inches wide and the length will depend on your baby's size. Basically the length is the same length of your shirt from the center back of the shirt all the way around to the other center back. And then I sewed this little piping at the 5 eighths of an inch mark. And then I folded the band in half and sewed the sides close. So then I clipped the corners and turned that band right sides out and gave it an ironing. And then I was ready to attach it to the bubble bottom. I pinned that band to the bubble, adjusting the gathers until they were evenly distributed, and then I sewed the two together. And when that was done, I set it aside and grabbed the shirt. And I'm putting the shirt front and back together at the side seams. And I'm doing this with the shirt separate from its lining. I'm also going to do the same thing with the lining later. So I'm putting the shirt front and back together and sewing the, that side seam and then I'm putting the line together in the same manner and sewing those side seams. I hope. Now I'm matching the shirt to the bubble bottom waistband combo and I'm leaving out the shirt lining in this step. Then I'm sewing the shirt to the bubble bottom, again making sure that lining stays separate. And the benefit of constructing the shirt in this manner is that you will be able to take that lining and fold up the raw edge to enclose the waist seam. I just like this method better than the zigzagging, but again, I'm not trying to talk poorly about anything. It's just a difference in preferences. It is sewing, so y'all. You do you. Now, this is a fun task of setting in those sleeves. I know. It's not one of my favorite things, but I just remind myself that I only need to do it twice. So you'll first do a French seam to enclose those sleeves. And then I basted the shirt to the lining around that armhole. It's just one last thing to think about when installing that sleeve. So before installing the sleeve, you'll have to do something else to take up the excess. You just about always with girl sleeves, you can gather them. But with boy sleeves, you have some options. I know it. You can put a box 
next pleat at the top of the sleeve. You can gather the sleeve or you can ease the sleeve into the armhole. I'm easing my sleeve, but if you're new, gathering would work just fine too. Then I insert my sleeve through that armhole so I have the right side of the sleeve together with the right side of the shirt. And I make sure to line up the front seam of the sleeve with the side seam of the shirt. And then I stitch around that. And yes, it is a pain in the butt. I'm not even going to try to sugarcoat it. Just drink some wine and get through it. <laughs> And after I am done sewing that sleeve to the shirt, then I trim up that seam and take it back to my machine and run a zigzag to enclose those raw edges. And finally, you can move on to the crotch. First, I turned that raw edge up about a quarter of an inch and gave it an ironing and folded it up again until it was flush with those leg openings. And after stitching on top of that, then I moved on to folding up those leg openings. I first folded a quarter of an inch and then Again, another quarter of an inch, maybe a smidgen more, maybe like maybe like three eighths, whatever. That creates a casing, and then I stitch the casing down, starting from one point to the other point, if you will. <laughs> then I cut a piece of elastic to the appropriate size. Reference, yeah, Henry, reference the pattern, or better yet, your little one if you have the option. And then I thread it through the casing using a safety pin. And when the end of that elastic gets to the start, yeah, Henry, you have to remember this part. When the edge of that elastic gets to the end of the casing, then I sew that side down before continuing to pull the elastic through. And once the elastic is popping out the other side, then I do the same. I sew that side down as well. So after putting in snap setter snaps in the crotch, which I do have a video on snap setter snaps, they're my favorite, um, to use for crotches, they're super easy to open and you can just rip them open for a diaper change and put them back together. And then I hand sew, you know, button snap combos to that back to enclose the back and then after doing that hand sewing finishing work, then I had this completed garment. I think it's quite adorable. I hope this video was helpful. If y'all have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them. And as always, I appreciate y'all for watching and I hope to catch y'all next time.